Lord, our Lord, how excellent thy name, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens will praise thy holy name forever, evermore. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, December the 13th. As is our usual procedure, we will sing several songs interspersed by a prayer, and then I will have a lesson for you that I hope will uh, be interesting and something that you can carry with you for just a little while. And so, in singing of songs of faith and praise, that's our songbook, if you would turn your book to number 992. Nine ninety-two. And please stay at that opening because the next song will be right across the page. Can you count the stars of evening that are shining in the sky? Can you count the clouds that daily over all the world go by? God the Lord, who doth not slumber, keepeth all the boundless number, but he careth more for thee, but he careth more for thee. Can you count the birds that warble in the sunshine all the day? Can you count the little fishes that in sparkling waters play? God the Lord their number knoweth, for each one his care he showeth, shall he not remember thee? Shall he not remember thee? Can you count the many children in their little beds at night? Who without a thought of sorrow rise again at morning light? God the Lord who dwells in heaven, loving care to each has given, he has not forgotten thee. He has not forgotten thee. And right across the page, 993, what a mighty God we serve. We'll sing it through twice. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Number 580. 580. <clears throat> 
The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just pause for a few moments this evening to remember you. We just pause at the close of a day and remember the blessings of that day. Although we're living in times that are strange to us, I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would um, see to it that we are blessed. Uh, we feel blessed. Uh, we feel blessed because we know that you are in our lives and, and that you are in our hearts. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would just continue to, to be with us and you uh, uh, guide our ways through your word. We thank you for this avenue of prayer. And at this time, we just remember some people that are close to us. We remember our friend Pat as she goes through several different issues in her life. And my neighbor Juan, as his father, is dealing with a cancer issue. I pray that you'd be with them and you would comfort them and comfort their families. Continue to be with us this evening and help us, dear Heavenly Father, to remember uh, that uh, we've come uh, to this earth to be servants of yours. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And if you would, our last song is number 1018. 1,018. It is the Christmas season. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him Heaven and nature and heaven and nature sing, sing and heaven and nature and sing and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. 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 No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns the next to grow. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is for as the curse is found, 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 he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. And 
wonders of his and love. 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 love. And wonders of his love. Oh, great song service. I hope that the Lord uh, was praised in song as we sung these songs. It is the Christmas season. It is December. It's right smack dab in the middle of the month. People are scurrying about. Uh, Thanksgiving is gone. And uh, the next great holiday on our calendars is Christmas. And so the question is, uh, what exactly do we do with Christ Christmas? I know there are people out there that uh, have bumper stickers that say, keep Christ in Christmas. Others say, Christ was never meant to be in Christmas. Some celebrate it as a religious holiday. Some celebrate it as a secular holiday. And I guess there are those out there that don't celebrate it at all. And so the big question is, since, and, and it is in the end of December, um, what do we do with Christmas? Um, just what is this holiday, and that's what it is, all about? You know, uh, very often Christians get offended if you say, Happy Holidays, because it's Merry Christmas not happy holidays, which is a more generic term that takes in all of the holidays around this season. Now, I'm going to rain on everybody's parade just a little bit this evening, just by letting us know that there is nowhere in our Bibles that it tells us that and, and actually authorizes the church to celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday. Now, is there biblical precedent for this? Well, let's look at uh, some of the words from the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. And there's some background with this. Galatians 4, verses 9 through 11. And it reads, But now that you have come to know God, or rather, to be known by God, how is it that you turn back again to the weak, worthless, elemental things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you, and perhaps that perhaps I have labored over you in vain. Now, is there some kind of double meaning to that? We well, you know we're probably uh, 50 or so A.D. It's 20, 25, 30 years after Jesus' resurrection. The church is in its infancy. It's in its first uh, 25, 30, 35 years. And the first people that became Christians were Jews. Now, what the Jews did was they celebrated Jewish holidays, and they were special the Passover and Pentecost and Sukkah, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths. They, they celebrated these. And as a matter of fact, it was uh, pretty cool for people to, to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem during any of these uh, particular feasts. Well, Paul says... To, you were desired to be enslaved all over again. What he's telling Jewish Christians is that those aren't your holidays anymore. Now, those holidays, those holidays were for a reason. But that reason, that reason is not with us any longer. And so, 
uh, there's something else that uh, will take precedent. There's something else that means even more. But if I'm looking at this, it says, I fear for you, perhaps I have labored over you in vain, that maybe you might choose some other days that you might hold as being very, very special. And just like you would be enslaved by trying to celebrate Passover again, or uh, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles again, why would you want to celebrate some earthly day and claim it to be a religious day? Let's get a little background here. From what I understand, and you know what, if, if you have research that, that tells me I'm wrong, whoever this goes out to that you, know, that you want to call or write or email, that, that's great. I got big wide shoulders. From what I understand from secular history, for some 300 years of the church, the church did not celebrate Christmas. They did not make a huge big deal out of the birth of Jesus. The departure came somewhere between 325 and 350 AD. All right, some 300 years after the church was formed. And December 25th became the day. Now, why December 25th? And again, let, let's, let's see if, if this makes sense to you. Some religious groups believed that the birth of the world was on March 25th. Now, why is this? Well, because it coincides just after the vernal equinox. That's springtime, when things come alive again. And so they calculated the birth of the world at about March the 25th. And so, uh, logically so, in their minds, they believed that the conception of the bright sun, S-O-N, now, that sun might be the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness that's talked about in Malachi 4.2. Let me read that for you. But for you who fear my name, the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness will rise up with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall, that sun of righteousness. And they, they took that son of righteousness to mean the S-O-N, son, son of God of righteousness. And so it was logical that since the gestation period for human beings is nine months, if the birth of the world was on March the 25th, that we would celebrate Christmas on December the 25th, some nine months later. Now, again, uh, nine months later, and you know, every three months we have a, a special solar event. You know, we have the vernal equinox, and then we have the summer solstice, we have the autumnal equinox, and then the winter solstice. Well, December 25th is just a couple of days after the winter solstice. And logically speaking, just after the winter solstice, days start to get longer again. There is more sun. Huh, that's pretty good, isn't it? And it makes some sense. However, it's not biblical. <laughs> you won't find that in New Testament writings. Now, you know what? I love the baby Jesus story. And I love the fact that Jesus was born as in a humble birth to regular old folks like you and I. 
to a dad who was a carpenter, to a, a young teenage uh, virgin woman, Mary. The story is wonderful. And it's accompanied by wise men from the east, shepherds in the field, angels, angels, uh, angel Gabriel that announced to Mary what was going to happen. And with that in mind, the, the story is wonderful. But you know what? We don't worship the baby. The baby had nothing to say to us of any good. Now, you know what? We celebrate George Washington's birthday, and he didn't do anything for us as a baby, did he? But we remember his life, and we celebrate his birthday, even though his birth had really nothing. We, you know, he, he was just a baby at birth. So we don't worship the baby. We worship the grown man, the Son of God. And so let's take a look for a moment. What about individuals honoring Christmas? Are you going to go down the road to perdition if you choose to celebrate Christmas? Well, let's take a look at what the Apostle Paul says about the liberties that we have in Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 14, verses 5 and 6, Paul writes, One person regards one day above another, and other regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord. Huh. Very interesting, isn't it? Now, you know what? We have the first day of the week when we honor the Lord. We celebrate this day 52 weeks out of the year. Every Lord's Day, we come together. Now, for that, we do have scriptural reference. We do have 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. We do have Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. We do have Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, that all talk about gathering together on the first day of the week. Now, if we have liberty in the Lord... As it says, each person must be fully convinced in his own mind to regard one day as he regards it. The passage teaches that if somebody wants to honor the Lord in some way on a day other than Sunday, he or she can do that. There are certain things that they can't do we know they gathered on the first day of the week to break bread. We know that the Lord's Supper is to be done on the Lord's Day. But the passage here teaches that if someone wants to honor God, we ought to honor God every day of our lives. And if we choose to, we have the liberty to do so. Here's the kicker. It says each person must be fully convinced in his own mind because one person regards one day among the other. Here's the important part. I may do that, but I can't bind it on you. If I choose on Tuesday to fast for the day and do it for myself, that would be fine. And I think the Lord would like me to do that. But I can't tell you, look, I'm fasting on Tuesday. you got to fast too, because I am. It just doesn't work that way. Parallel to that special day, if somebody wants to remember Christ's birth or some other aspect of Jesus Christ. Let's let's stick to his birth on December 21st, 25th. He has the liberty to do that. But guess what? 
I can't bind that on you. I can't bind it on you because there's nowhere in the Lord's word that says that we are to celebrate the Lord's birth on the 25th day of December. So, as we complete the lesson this evening, what's, what's the application of all of this? Well, I would say that if we want to honor Christmas as a way to honor God, we have that right. We just cannot bind that on someone else. We can't do that. The, the church actually, really, from a biblical standpoint, is not authorized to say, you must celebrate Christ's birth on the 25th of December. Now, some of us like to be pragmatic or practical about things. Let's get pragmatic. There is a practical aspect to Christmas. And the fact that it is the same date every year makes it easy to be practical or pragmatic about it. Let's promote the spirit that comes from Christmas. If folks do Christmas right, they actually celebrate that Jesus was born of a virgin. And this virgin was immaculately, conce immaculately conceived a child, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. That's a great story. And you know what? That's the truth. That's as biblical as it gets. And you know what? Christmas is a time when people put things down and families get together. It might be tougher this year during the pandemic. We have chosen at this time to give gifts and receive gifts. What's more wonderful than giving gifts to one another? I can remember when I was a, a, a young child, I remember liking to get gifts. I mean, that was a fun time at Christmas. But I remember when I actually started to earn a little bit of money, the satisfaction I got out of buying someone who was special to me a gift because it, it came from me. These are, these are benefits that we need day in and day out. Our gifts that we give to folks may not be uh, physical gifts. They may be spiritual gifts. They may be counseling. They may be a visit. They may be uh, an email, a card. They may be a text. They may be any of these things. It's our way of giving and our way of service. But at the same time, let's make sure that we're not doing this because it's Christmas. We're doing it because the attitude that we have at this time of the year. And you know what? It may be true that at this time of the year, because people are giving gifts and because it seems that people are, are happy and families are getting together, that sometimes people in the world want to know a little bit more about what brings people this way. And it might be a more ripe time for someone to actually come to the Lord. Let's make sure that we correct the whole problem in the spirit in which the scriptures say that we should. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15, it says, 
but seeking, but speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in all aspects to him who is the head, even Christ. We are supposed to grow toward Christ in the spirit of love. And so I can't put you down because you celebrate Christmas. I can't castigate you because you don't celebrate Christmas. We can't take a holier-than-thou attitude about it. And so, with that in mind, the, the spirit that revolves around this time of the year is one that ought to permeate our hearts and our minds every day of our lives. Every day of our lives, we should be gift givers. Every day of our lives, we should take a look and see how that we can satisfy the Lord the way only we are able to do that. And so with that in mind, and, and I know it's early, I pray that you and your family will have a wonderful Christmas time. No matter how you choose, how you decide to use it, no matter what attitude you take about it, it is a time of the year, and we know we look outside and we see the lights adorning people's homes. They, they feel very special about this time of the year. I hope that all of us will celebrate the, the spirit of Christmas, however we decide to do so. And I hope that uh, all of us will look into our hearts and look into our minds and do that. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of another day, we just pray that uh, you would be with us and uh, as we put our heads on our pillows this evening, help us to have thoughts of you. Help our last words to be words to you. And as we arise uh, tomorrow morning, that uh, our thoughts will be to you, and at all times we will get into your word because we know that in your word we find the truths. We find what we are supposed to do in our lives through your Holy Spirit-inspired word. Bless us through this evening. Continue to be with us. Continue to help us to be your children. Help us to use your word as a light to our path and a light and a lamp to our way. And help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be of service to others, the gift givers of the world. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Have a good evening, and God bless you all. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent thy name. How excellent is thy name in all the earth Who has set thy glory above the heavens Will praise thy holy name forever, evermore